Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Mini Cooper S. This sees a mild refresh, mild facelift for the 22 model year. And uh, we've got some different styling on the inside, on the outside. You notice we've got new 18 inch wheels and this very funky looking multicolored roof. That's one of the first things I noticed when I got into this new Mini. We also have a slightly different front bumper with a, a colored, body colored panel on the inside so we don't have that open fish face that we used to have on the 21 and previous Mini Cooper S's. Let's walk you around this new Mini Cooper S, talk about what it's been like to live with and drive this week. Um, I think this is still a fun, enjoyable car that doesn't take itself quite so seriously and I think that's important in the market these days. Let's hop inside and show you what it's like. And joy of joys, we have a six-speed manual transmission in this Mini Cooper S today. I'm very grateful that Mini is still offering a manual transmission in their cars. We have this fully digital gauge cluster that moves with the steering wheel, which is kind of cool. So you get a lot of adjustability in this Mini Cooper S. Uh, pretty nice driving position. You can get these seats nice and low. They're very supportive, pretty comfortable. And uh, despite this car's size, it still has a decent amount of room on the inside. I mean, just, you know, with its limitations, but you could probably fit an adult pretty comfortably in the back. You've got a decent amount of leg room sat behind myself at five foot 10. And it's just a cool looking vehicle. You even have a rear sunroof shade somewhere here. There it is. Get some light in the back. Pretty cool. Sunroof operation. What does that look like? Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. You can see this is a very familiar looking interior, uh, just kind of refreshed and updated in some specific ways. We've got different steering wheel buttons. The slightly larger 8.2 inch infotainment screen is now standard, whereas before it was only available on the top trims. Uh, we've got Apple CarPlay, though no Android Auto, unfortunately. We get wireless charging right here in the center armrest, which is adjustable and it folds back too if you want it to. And look at this, a mechanical handbrake. None of this electronic nonsense. And it's pretty strong. You can do handbrake turns in this and have a little bit of fun. We have three different drive modes, sport, mid, and green. And uh, basically sport will improve your throttle response. Mid is just kind of a mid driving mode. And green is super eco-focused. It really dulls the throttle quite a bit. Um, we've got this infotainment that is a little bit of a mystery to me still after living with it for a week. Though, I think once you have Apple CarPlay and everything set up with this, you're going to be fine. For some reason, I've always thought the mini scroll wheel is the opposite direction that it should be, so that's, that takes a little bit of getting used to, but you adjust and adapt pretty quickly and pretty easily, no problem. Uh, buttons and knobs for climate control. We have a stop start off button, which is great, and traction control off button. Nothing is hidden in this behind the screen that you really need. We have a slightly new vent design too, which I think looks kind of cool neat how these move around and we also have a head-up display that pops up and out it's a bit of a bear to get to it takes a lot of inputs but I think we can make it so let's see system settings displays head-up display and if we enable that it's gonna pop up it just takes its sweet time and it's one of these little displays that's projected on the on this little piece of glass which I'm not crazy about it's also a bit of a strange viewing angle sometimes. So we're actually just going to turn that off and leave it down the way it was. This Mini Cooper S starts around $28,000. And uh, as spec, it's about thirty-six dollars There's about an $8,000 option. It gives you all the luxury packages and features that you would need, premium sound system, all that. We still get the twin power turbo two liter engine. The four cylinder makes 189 horsepower and 207 pound feet of torque. It's rated for 23 miles to the gallon on the city, 33 on the highway. Probably could beat that a little bit with how small and efficient this car is. 27 MPG combined. And I love that you still have the cutouts for the headlamps in this Mini Cooper's hood. Just a cool hood design and just a cool looking car too. I'm not crazy about this roof being multicolored, but Mini has always had a bit of fun with their roofs, and this is no exception. There's a few other options you can get to. Still got the Union Jack and the taillights, and uh, let's check out the trunk here. So, not a lot of space on first inspection, but 
you raise this, you get a pretty low loading floor. And if you fold your seats down, you get even more space back there. And uh, we had this out grocery shopping this week, plenty, plenty of room in the back here. And it's kind of nice to keep things compact and from rolling around if you want to have uh, some fun in your Mini Cooper S. And you put the seats up, you get a little bit of room, you can put some larger items back there. Of course, you are limited in space, but hey, this is a small car, and for what it is, I think it makes a pretty good use of it. You get a couple grab handles underneath the tailgate to lower it, and uh, pretty easy operation. You still get the beer can tailpipes, or almost beer can shaped tailpipes. That's a fun story. Um, cool looking fuel filler cap. And just a sharp, funky, different looking interior. I've always liked the mini interiors. They're slightly weird. We even have a Union Jack on the headrest here. Um, but, you know, they're nicely appointed. Good levels of luxury and comfort. And just, they feel quite solid. Let's see if we can fit the back seat. I can. There's a little bit of a cutout here in the back of the seat for my knees. I think you could fit a couple adults in the back with relative comfort and ease, as long as your front seat passengers are around or under six feet. Pretty easy to get in and out of the back too. I'm not really sure I'd swing for the four-door Cooper S. If I really wanted something bigger, I'd just get something bigger. Yeah, cool looking car. Let's hop in, take it for a drive, see what it's like on the road. We've driven a couple different iterations of Mini Coopers in the last year. We've had a base model, Oxford Edition, which is uh, just bare bones, six-speed manual, cheaper for college students, which I think is cool. And then we had the full, snarling, fire-breathing JCW GP, which was quite a handful on the street and the track, but still a lot of fun. And this Mini Cooper S kind of slots in between somewhere, and I think it's a nice balance. It's a lot more comfortable and refined than Mini Coopers used to be back in the day, but it still kind of gives you some of that enjoyment factor behind the wheel. It is completely numb. All of your inputs and controls have virtually no feel, no clutch feel, no steering feel. Um, the shifter is pretty good. The six-speed manual is probably my top choice between this and the seven-speed dual clutch. I do really like this transmission. It's great. There's a lot of rev hang. But despite all of those cons, it's a pretty fun car to drive. Let's take it on the road and see what it's like. I love that Mini is still offering a six-speed manual transmission with this car. They haven't killed it like so many other manufacturers. It's been so long since we've had a press car with a manual transmission and it just feels good to roll my own gears again. That rev hang, it's there. Luckily, this two liter turbo is very responsive, it pulls well. This is only about 2,800, 2,900 pounds, so it's still pretty light. And 189 horsepower goes a long way with a lightweight car. Luckily, the pedals are well set up for heel toe downshifting. The brake pedal is nice and firm, you can modulate it pretty easily. Though I can't quite say the same about the accelerator pedal. We still get that joyful mini handling, gobs of turn and grip, very taut chassis, though there is a lot of understeer. We don't have that neutral, tail happy handling character that we used to get in the older minis. You lift off, you chuck it in, you're not going to get any oversteer, unfortunately. On the highway though, 75 miles an hour, this is pretty comfortable. You can get radar guided cruise control, lane keep assist. I think that's something that's probably more available with the seven speed dual clutch or maybe just an option that wasn't checked in this Mini Cooper. But um, on the highway, it's a pretty comfortable car. Ride quality is nice, despite its short wheelbase and small uh, tire sidewall. But uh, this is a pretty livable package. Wind noise is very low and uh, we've just got a little bit of noise over potholes from these 18 inch wheels. A big improvement in this Mini from previous generations.
you get a little bit of a subtle blow off noise between shift and full throttle. <laughs> Still a fun car to drive. <laughs> One annoying thing this week has been the steering wheel controls. They are right where your palms rest and um, you'll notice that they've changed them a little bit. They've tweaked them from what Mini Coopers have had before where they were kind of these rounded buttons and these are just kind of flat buttons. They look good, but they are just a pain because you're always hitting uh, various buttons, whether it's the volume or your cruise control. Not a huge deal because they're not that important and they don't really do much, but still ergonomically, come on, what are you guys thinking? Move those buttons in a little bit so we don't have to hit them with our proper nine and three driving position. This is just a fun car to wheel around. The short wheelbase, the nimble handling, the size of it, the weight of everything. It's just neat, it's unique. There aren't a lot of cars this small anymore. And it's definitely a different experience. I think you could get into a Veloster N and have a little bit more of a hardcore experience or get into a GTI and have a better daily driver or a Civic Type R and have just one of the best overall cars that's out there. But this Mini just blends it all together and makes for a fun experience. It's not necessarily the enthusiast package that it used to be, but it does blend it all together well. And even though it's lost all of its steering feel and feedback, that makes it a much more comfortable and usable car on a daily basis. And you know, maybe we don't want a ton of steering feel in our daily driver that's gonna be uh, you know, used for commuting or for highway duty. I will say, when you load this car up and you drive it hard, it does get better, it does improve. You get a little bit more feedback through the, through the rim and uh, that's partially thanks to those 18 inch wheels and tires, which I would definitely get wheel and tire insurance for. They're pretty skinny sidewalls. I like that there are buttons and knobs for everything in this Mini Cooper. You don't really have to go into this confusing infotainment to change a whole lot. Once you've got everything set up and ready to go, you're okay. You can do just fine in this Mini Cooper on a daily basis with wireless Apple CarPlay and uh, all of your climate control buttons down here. A few other little subtle tweaks in the interior. This is different, and when you change the volume, uh, it'll also give you some kind of a light that shows you where your volume level is, which is cool. Plenty of torque in sixth gear to make some passes. And it is a responsive engine, so you can rev match with ease, you can heel toe downshift with ease. There are just gobs of rev hang. You just have to let the clutch slip into the next gear. love this shifter though. It's just a joy to rev through. The shift into second is hard to get right. It's not the easiest car to drive smoothly. get a good wallop of torque though at pretty much any RPM. I've driven new cars with worse rev hang and I've driven new cars with better rev hang this kind of sits in the middle. You get used to it after a little while and it's not a deal breaker for sure. This manual transmission is still a lot of fun to go through the gears. This is an easy six speed to drive too. This is your first manual transmission or maybe you're not the most experienced stick shift driver. Uh, you could pilot this with relative ease. The clutch is very easy to use. The, the relationship with everything is very fluid and natural feeling. It's 
Let's turn off traction control, see what happens. You can go full off, which is great. Especially good for handbrake turns if you're into that sort of thing. from those front tires. Good amount of mechanical grip in this Mini. I would really like to see a bit more playfulness from the rear end. But that said, I understand that uh, with safety in mind, you don't necessarily want that in a stock car. I'm sure there's some aftermarket options that have slightly beefier rear sway bars and you can chuck your Mini in and have a little bit of a slide, but that's not gonna happen in this Mini Cooper S or even the JCW GP we had last year. So while we're cruising here, let's test out this Harman Kardon sound system. Um, yeah, we'll just start with Ganja, why not? I actually use these volume controls on purpose now. of sound system this week for around a thirty thousand dollar car this is one this car's about 36 grand um not bad not bad at all these track selection controls are a bit strange to select the next track you actually have to hit down and then okay it won't just do it by pressing up or down you'll see a little menu pop up here and you have to like select whether you want the previous track or the next track So decent sound system, decent levels of comfort, decent levels of driver engagement and enjoyment. Um, this is just kind of minis hit a middle ground with everything and it results in a pretty nicely balanced overall car. I like this car for what it is. I think, you know, if you come in with expectations that this is still the performance, you know, enthusiast brand that mini used to be, you're going to be disappointed. But if you think of this as a car that's just a little bit different, a little bit funky, it's having some fun, it's having a good time, it's not taking itself too seriously, and you like that in a car, then this is a pretty good option in the market. Lots of different options, lots of customizability with these minis, and um, you know, maybe not necessarily something that I would buy, but I have enjoyed driving it this week, and it's just been a fun, enjoyable car. So anyway, guys, those are kind of my thoughts on the new Mini Cooper S. Still a good time behind the wheel with a little bit more refinement, slightly better looks with this 22 refresh, facelift, whatever you want to call it. Just all the red.
my ping in the world. <laughs> Just gotta let that clutch out and force it into the next gear. Okay, guys. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll uh, finish up this drive, park in our lot, walk you around this one more time. But uh, there's the new Mini Cooper S. I'm still trying to decide if I prefer this S or the base model. Uh, just standard three-cylinder Mini that we had with a six-speed manual last year. That was such a fun car. Cheap, simple, red. <laughs> the amount of squat you get under acceleration is kind of satisfying. It makes you feel like you're going somewhere or doing something. Ride quality is pretty decent in this new Mini, too. There's no major impacts that jar you or threaten to upset your significant other in the passenger seat. All right, guys, so that's it for this one. For more videos on this Mini Cooper S, head on over to the Winding Road Magazine YouTube channel or the Daily Motor YouTube channel. And uh, Charlie will have something for you guys there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Um, yeah, Mini is still having some fun, and I appreciate what they're doing. My GoPro battery just went out, so we're going to finish this walk around on the iPhone. What do you guys think about these new wheels? I'm a little bit torn. The multicolored roof is interesting. I guess they've done a good job blending the colors. Love that double sunroof. All right guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.